All right, we have another Breitling B01 chronograph in for review today. This one being the 41 millimeter. And I want to give a huge shout out once again to Saltzman's Watches. They have a bunch of Breitlings, including this Navi Timer here. Definitely check them out. They actually have watches from Citizen to Tag to Breitling and all different types of other watches as well. Definitely check them out. Tell them that Average Joe sent you. They have watches to fit any budget. So definitely check them out. So we have here the Breitling Navi Timer. I actually reviewed one just recently. It was a 46 millimeter in blue. You could definitely check out that card right there. That was a little bit bigger, but it didn't wear as big as I thought it would. All right, so we're gonna take some measurements of the Navi Timer here. Uh, we should be getting 41, and we are right there. So case diameter is 41. Thickness, we're looking at a, about a 13, almost 14 millimeters in thickness. And we're gonna take a look at lug to lug. Right about a 46 lug to lug. Yeah, we're going to get a 22 millimeter lug width as well if you're going to put on an aftermarket strap. I wanted to get the 41 millimeter in because, as a lot of you know who are subscribed to the channel, know that I bought my Grail watch and this one here is a 41 as well. This one here being a 2007 version of the Navi Timer. And I will tell you one thing right now. The big difference is, take a look at this crystal versus this crystal. You get more of that domed sapphire on the 2023 version, and it's also boxed, where this one is not boxed. So therefore, I get a little bit more of the glare, even though it is double sapphire, or should I say double AR coated. This one here is also double AR coated, but you can see that the black looks a lot more richer and it does actually um, help to refract any type of glare um, at all angles as opposed to a more flatter crystal even though this does have a slight dome this crystal does a much better job at those uh, reflections in the glass so nice job there i think the other big thing that you could or the big difference that you could see between the two is just those chronograph sub dials uh, there's definitely more of a deeper dish look there as opposed to this and also they are bigger and also closer together than this uh, 2007 counterpart now missing is going to be your Breitling B counterbalance which I always loved and I wish they continued that uh, and also you're going to see the logo has changed as well this one is actually not even the Breitling logo. Um, this is actually a logo that actually I will put at the bottom of the screen because I can't reference what it is, but I will tell you it's not Breitling's logo. But a lot of people think, you know, a lot of people will say that this is the old Breitling logo and it's actually not. Uh, this is definitely not even Breitling's logo, but they used it because they, it's an aviation watch. So I wanted to mention that I have this my Navi timer on the uh, Straps Co. Rally style type bracelet here. It's got the drilled holes, and ironically, um, I actually have a butterfly clasp here. But this one here, it doesn't matter which way you lock it, uh, as opposed to the stock bracelet here um, on the new Navi timer, where you have to go one way and then. There you go, like that. So uh, you'll notice that with the newer bracelet, they actually do a combination of brushing, polishing, brushing, polishing. Whereas the older style, you get all polishing. As you can see here, the entire watch actually gets polished. Here, you're gonna get some brushing and polishing as well, which I do like the contrast. I do love polished. But when you can get brushed and polished combined, I think you get the best of both worlds. Gives it a little bit more of a premium look. So I think Breitling did a really, really nice job with that. The other big difference here 
um, is going to be your clasp because this one here is a butterfly clasp. Not a huge fan, to be completely honest with you, uh, because of the micro adjust. You just don't get the micro adjust that you get with a traditional bracelet such as the older style that you'll see here. You can use all these micro adjusts here and that you could definitely get your bracelet more dialed in. A beautiful display case back as you can see right here. And this is actually a Breitling in-house caliber movement, the B01. You're gonna get a 70 hour power reserve. So I'm gonna actually activate the movement. We're just gonna take a listen to that crown. And there's your sub seconds at the nine o'clock as it just starts to sweep. And I will tell you one thing right now, very tight, very tight tolerances. You know, you really gotta press hard on these pushers to get these going. And there's your reset. This one here, um, just, you don't even see that hand bounce at all. It just, it just activates. Um, that is just absolutely superb. And this one here, you're gonna get two positions. Not a screw down, by the way. Um, so this is two positions out. You're gonna to get to set the time. And then if you bring it out one position, that's where you're gonna be able to set the date. And you can hear nice solid clicks. And then you push it in. So another drawback of these Navi timers and doesn't matter what age you get because you're getting this bezel here this slide rule bezel and it's friction fit by the way so it goes bi-directionally there's going to be this rubber gasket here and that's really the weakness of this watch so you're only going to get 50 meters of water resistance okay now setting the older Navi timer here this one here uh, is not an in-house movement. It's actually the Valju 7753, which is essentially a 7750, but just turned over so you can get the orientation of the dials. Now, in order to set this date here, you actually have to go around because there is only one position. Now, there's a cheat, and I'm gonna show it to you right here. So, here we go. What I do is I go to around one o'clock and then I bring it back and I'll bring it back past eight and then I'm gonna go forward again. And this is how you cheat the date function. And then you bring it back again. I think, I don't even think you have to go to one o'clock, but I go a little past the eight o'clock there and I do it again. That will activate, check that out. I'm gonna see how far I have to go back. So I'll go, I'll go to eight this time and so yeah you can go to 8 go to 12 i'm gonna see if i can even go to maybe 8 30. because obviously the shorter distance you go the better it will be for you yeah you can go to 8 30. 8 30 is the tolerance so 8 30 to 12 will be able to hack that so that's one of the gripes that you're going to have when it comes to this particular movement but to me that's an added cool factor um for me personally because uh, at the end of the day, you're getting one click and you can show people how to do that. And it's just a, it's just an icebreaker and kind of a, a neat quirk that you don't get on many watches. So, and then this here, not as tight a tolerances, but I did just have the watch serviced. And um, even so, you're gonna get tighter, tighter tolerances with the in-house movement. But again, you don't get the jump of the second, uh, of that chronograph hand there, so. So when we activate the chronograph, the reason why you don't get a jumping of the chronograph hand is because the Bre uh, Breitling uses the uh, a lateral clutch. And that's something that you typically will see in higher end watches. And I did say that in my last video as well with the 46 millimeter. The Breitling B01 is using that lateral clutch and you're getting that added value at this price point. But there's definitely not a bad angle when it comes to this watch. Let me show to you on wrist. It is a perfect size for a 
wrist of my size, which is a seven inch wrist. I think this is just a sweet spot. Um, for me, I, w- I would go for either a 41 or even a 43. I think they're both perfectly within my comfort zone. When we take a look at the dial itself, you see a lot of cool things going on here. First of all, you see the lack of clutter. Uh, the modern Breitlings are definitely taking away a lot of this, these numerals here that you see all around the, on, the, on the dial here. Um, so Breitling essentially just used the most used and the most necessary things for this particular dial so that you can still make those calculations without all the clutter. Okay, so you're getting a more modernized, clean looking dial and you're getting that reverse panda look, which is uh, really the Breitling Navi timer. Now, they do sell these in other colors like I did the blue uh, in the last video. But quite frankly, I am definitely more biased to the reverse panda. I think it's just the classic look and a timeless look. Now, when we do activate, this is where you're going to get that chronograph second hand, which is done in red. And this is going to be your minutes, your hours, and this is going to be your continuous running seconds. Stop it and it just snaps back into place. No problem at all. You do get luminescence on the handset and of course all the indices. Let me show you a loom shot right here. You are indeed getting super luminova. You're getting C3 all the way around. So let's see how this performs on the time graph. As we know, we're going to get 28,800 beats per hour with this watch. Okay, and this is indeed COSC certified, so it is tested in multiple positions uh, on the time graph to get you uh, plus six to minus four seconds per day so that you get that, that, that great accuracy that you would expect from a luxury watch. This is one of those watches that you can wear with a tuxedo, you could wear it with a business suit, you could wear it with a jean, jeans and t-shirt. This is very versatile watch and these watches also come with a leather strap if you choose to get it in that configuration. Now I would recommend you buying it with the bracelet and then getting the strap after market, which is what I did with this watch here. I bought uh, an extra strap for this. Uh, leather strap because it's a, just a much much more affordable option to do it that way uh, since the bracelets are much more expensive especially when you buy them um, after the fact so if you can get it with the watch you usually pay a little bit of a premium and then what I like to do is then just buy the leather um, afterwards and that to me you get the most value for your money so there is your side view there with the brushing there. You get those top hat type pushers. Nothing has really changed with that. Okay, you do get that B logo there on the side with the crown. Okay, and even the knurling on that bezel there is similar but different you know it actually looks a little more refined on the newer one it actually looks like they even did some polished and brushed areas if i'm not mistaken so it just looks a little bit more uh profound when it comes to the ridges here whereas here it's not well i'm wrong it, it definitely looks perfect they both look profound okay but I think you can see a bit of a difference though. I think because this is all polished where this one looks like it has brushing in between. So it gives you a little bit more of that contrast. And again, a little bit more of that premium looks. I do like the clean look of the newer Breitlings, but there's just something about having a, an older looking Breitling Navi timer with everything on there. That just adds to the charm of this watch, and which is why I prefer this version. Now, 
there's there's nothing blasphemous about this particular version of this watch. I think it's really um, an awesome iteration of what Breitling Navitime really is about. And I think they did a marvelous job with this watch. Very, very clean, still functional. And so they haven't they haven't strayed. Because a lot of watch a lot of watches, I mean, even like when you see in the car industry, they'll stray away from the old charm of what really made this popular. And they kind of pay a little bit more homage than they do really uh, replicating the you know the look into more modern modern styling. So I think Breitling really hit this on the nose in regards to staying true to its roots, but also giving you that modern styling. And I think they just really did a marvelous job. And I'll tell you, <laughs> the only thing keeping me back from buying this is the fact that this thing is very close to ten thousand dollars. And I'll tell you, I have um, I have other ways to spend that money right now. So. Um, I will stick with this one here that I pretty much got at half price. So that's the way I look at it. I look at my older version as getting a Breitling Navi timer at half price. And that was including the fact that I had this completely serviced. So by the way, stay tuned for a future video where I'm going to actually break down how much it costed me to service this watch. Going to give you some before and after shots and also break down the receipt and itemize everything for you, full transparency, just in case you are indeed interested to know how much it costs to service a Breitling Navi timer. So stay tuned for that. I wanna thank you so much for joining me and definitely we'll see you guys next time on the next episode of Average Joe Watch Reviews. <laughs>